Hi everyone, hope you're all very well. Bernard here, welcome to my film and TV channel and Merry Christmas. We're doing another Christmas film today, so Merry Christmas to you whenever you're watching this. You're probably watching it in February, but uh, anyway, <laughs> it's there for Christmas anyway. Yeah, a little movie review on, on a Christmas film today. We don't get that many, do we? I've, I've seen a couple so far and reviewed a couple this year, but... Uh, we're talking Christmas 2020, depending on, depending on you're watching this, obviously. Uh, so, yeah, a little Christmas film today. And it's entitled The Christmas Chronicles 2. A very original, that, isn't it? Very original. Well, please, if you're new to this channel, push that subscribe button, push the bell notifications. You know, these vlogs are coming out. I'm trying to get to 500 subscribers by Christmas 2020. Much appreciated if you have subbed. But if you haven't, please do so and point other people in my direction. That'd be great if I can get there. We are still on target. It's sort of stuttering along just at the moment. But uh, as I'm recording this at the end of November, but... Uh, Please, much appreciated. Check my playlist. I do drama reviews and poster reviews and quizzes, etc., etc. All film and TV stuff. So please check out those playlists. And you will notice some football ones as well for my football team, Manchester City. I do history vlogs and stuff, what's going on with City now. So if you or anyone you know might be interested, please give them a kick. Give them a kick in my direction and get them to sub as well. That would be absolutely fantastic. I love you all. Wonderful. If you do that for me. Super. Right. Any comments? Always any comments on this film or anything you want to comment about. Right with this film, then just leave any comments. It's nice to get comments and be able to answer them or respond in some way. And please uh, don't don't forget, if you can't give a comment, and you, it's nice to get views, but it's nice to get a little thumbs up as well. Just press that little thumbs up thing. That'd be fantastic. Right. The Christmas Chronicles 2. Yeah. So we have had a one, obviously, a couple of years ago. There's been a, a gap. Uh, it's a PG rating. 112 minutes. More on that after. You know me and these long sort of Christmassy sort of family films. Uh, about 102 minutes run time, which is still quite long, isn't it? An hour and 40 minutes, hour and 42 minutes. It's a Christmas adventure comedy directed and co-produced by Christopher Christopher Columbus, I was going to say that, and Chris Columbus from a screenplay by uh, Chris Columbus and Matt Lieberman. Uh, it's second instalment, of course, in what is going to be the Christmas Chronicles film series, so I don't know how many of these we're going to get, and it's, of course, a sequel to the 2018 film The Christmas Chronicles, 7.1 out of 10 on Internet Movie Database. That didn't do too bad, did it? Over 44,000 reviews. I thought it was okay. Um... I didn't get overly carried away. I thought it was a nice, a nice Christmas film, The Christmas Chronicle. If you've not watched that, it's, you don't necessarily need to watch that to watch this. It does sort of follow on, and there is sort of a link to it. So, uh, but please, uh, yeah, this was well worth a watch anyway. Anyway, yeah, of course we've got Kurt Russell reprising his role, haven't we, as Santa Claus? And guess who's joined him? Yes, his long-term girlfriend. I thought they were married, but obviously they're not. They just live together. Uh, Goldie Horn uh, has the role as Mrs. Christmas, or Mrs. Well, Mrs. Claus, whatever she's called in this. Uh, also stars Judah Lewis, Kimberly Williams, Paisley, also star. Yeah, the film had a limited the uh, the uh, theatrical release. Uh, uh, I don't remember seeing it in the UK. I think probably all the cinemas had shut by the time this came out again, to be honest with you. Uh, but it's uh, beginning to stream now on Netflix. So you can catch up on this on Netflix from November the 25th. So as I'm putting this out, it's available on Netflix. So yeah, I, I, I thought I was dead. Got a nice surprise when I looked at Netflix today and uh, saw it on there. So I thought, hey, I'll give it a watch. What's it about? Well, Kate Pearce, who stars in the first, is now a cynical teen. Aren't they all cynical when the teen? Teenagers is unexpectedly reunited with Santa Claus when a mysterious ex elf, come human troublemaker, threatens to cancel Christmas. The nasty, nasty man. Touches of Santa Claus. There's touches of other films in this uh, in this little movie, which we'll talk about. I'll certainly, certainly made a couple of major ones. Anyway, uh, little hints of Santa Claus, the movie in this one as well, which is still one of my classic movies that I will watch every. So not every Christmas, but certainly every two or three Christmases, I love to watch uh, the Santa Claus movie. Is it any good? Well, it's very early days, as you know, obviously. It's only just come out, so there's not masses of reviews out there. Rotten Tomatoes, it's got a 70% positivity rating based on 20 reviews, and that's 14 fresh, but 6 rotten, so a fair amount of rotten reviews, which is mm, a bit harsh for a Christmas. I mean, it's Christmas good... Uh, good spirit, good goodwill to all men, isn't it? And things go to goodwill to all films as well. It should be, shouldn't it? Really, it's only got an average rating of five point eight out of ten, so it's it's below that magical six out of ten watchable mark that I always aim for, isn't it? 
Metacritic. The Metacritics, again, there's only literally five critics have bothered to leave a review or seen it to leave a review. There's no early, early, look, early lookings at these. Some of the critics get to see these things well before we do, but obviously there wasn't much of that about with this one. Uh, it's only getting two positive reviews and three mixed. So no negative, but only two positive and three mixed, and only scoring 54 out of 100, so even less than Rotten Tomatoes. Um, 5.8 out of 10 this works out at 5.4 out of 10 on Metacritic and the score it scores anywhere between 4.2 out of 10 and 7 out of 10 Consequence of Sounds Clint Worthington only rated it 4.2 out of 10 he said it's hard not to think of the Christmas Chronicles series as a series of wasted opportunities Kurt Russell as Santa Claus with Goldie Hawn his doting wife is such an inspired casting choice that it's a real bummer to see them do so little with it uh, Variety's Owen Gleiberman, we, we do like to quote him a few times, he gave it 6 out of 10, so he was kinder. When Christmas movies cease to be special, when they're all scooped out of the same river and non-stop product, there's something almost reassuring about a Christmas movie that lifts you up by knowingly dumbing Christmas down. Yeah, I think that's a positive, I think. <laughs> I'm not overly sure, but it's 6 out of 10, I suppose it is a positive. And the raps Alonso Duralde gave it 7 out of 10. He gave it one of the highest scores. And he said, well, Netflix is The Christmas Chronicles 2. hits pretty much every note you'd expect. It throws in enough surprises and deep dives into Yuletide lore to keep it from being mere tinsel. Yeah, there's a couple of little background stories which are quite nice. A quite nice addition to the story as well, you know, about the folklore, etc., which, which was nice to see in this sort of film. Internet Movie Database, we've got no single person has bothered to leave a review yet. I, I nearly left one just for the sake of it, but I don't, just don't have the time. I had to come on here and do this for you. So Internet Movie Database, just 50, 56 people. Joe Public, you and me have left a score, uh, and it, it's averaging 6.8 out of 10, so that's not bad, just under 7, so that's not bad at the moment. Um, I don't think, going on what I've seen, that's going to go up and down that much. I think... Uh, be interested to see in a couple of weeks time when there's obviously uh, hundreds or even thousands of reviews uh, just what the figure is but I, I think that that'll pretty much hover around that point I would have thought we'll see let's see anyway just uh, check in a couple of weeks and see how far out I am I will do anyway just to have a just to have a nosy right my little thoughts on it because I can't I can't give you anybody else's um MGN Burner's thoughts right well, you know me and, and young actors. Uh, I wasn't overly impressed with the with the leads to this. With to be honest, the young leads uh, to, to this. To be honest with you, uh, there's some pretty poor acting talent, adult wise, uh, in the bit parts as well. Um, never mind junior. Never mind the younger younger actors. Um, fortunately, once you uh, sort of get past the verbal setting the scene, setting the family scene of the movie, if you like, the first twenty thirty minutes or so, which is uh, to be. To be honest with you, a little bit, a little bit boring. Um, I did get a little bit bored with it. I thought, "What's this? Come on, get on with it." And fortunately, it did. It did eventually start going, so that was okay. Um, but obviously, as the action scenes kick in later on in the film, the, the adventure is it? like the task to do. It's quite good. I quite enjoyed that. It does. It sort of the acting sort of goes secondary anyway. So you can put up with the the poor young talent and the poor older talent as well, if you like. Uh, the humour, the humour side is a bit iffy, a bit hit and miss. I didn't think, find much to smile about in it. It wasn't sort of certainly not laugh out loud stuff. There's the the odd look, the odd glance, the odd sort of comment, but nothing fantastic. It's more it's more an adventure film, a fantasy adventure film. To be honest with you, the humour side, the classic as a comedy, but it is fairly weak. There's some great cinematography in it. And the Christmas village makes you feel Christmassy. Yeah, that's how it should be, you know, when you're you're at the North Pole. You want you want to see you want to feel very Christmassy. And it does that. It make it makes it gives you that sense of Christmas. Uh I certainly wasn't convinced about uh Russell in the original. A lot of people liked him in it. I I wasn't convinced of him in the original film. Uh and to be honest, uh now with the addition of Goldie Horn for the second one, I'm still not convinced of him or Goldie Horn, to be honest with you. But um, they do an okay job. I mean it's, it's all right, it's not bad. I mean, the kids, it's for the kids, this isn't it? They, they, I don't think the kids will mind. He looks the part, uh, Russell looks the part, but sadly to me, anyway, uh, Goldie Horn sort of doesn't look the part. But, uh, anyway, so let me know what you think about that. I'm not, I'm not going to go into great detail about that, but, uh, yeah, she doesn't quite, doesn't quite fit the homely. <laughs> Um, Mrs. Claus to me, but hey, there you go. It was nice to see them together, wasn't it? At the end of the day, 
So what we get, we get CGI elves. We don't get real elves like you do in Santa Claus, etc., etc., which makes it uh, exact, you know, appeal appealing to me. We do get CGI elves, which originally I didn't, I didn't sort of like, but it's weird. I'm sure the younger audience liked them, and I made a little note while I was watching it that I'm sure the younger audience sort of like them. But they do, they grow on me. I must admit, they did actually as the film film progressed. I did enjoy them a lot more. I did uh, obviously they are CGI, so it's never as effective as real. You know, if you look at films like. Um, the gremlins etc which i'm going to mention in a moment and stuff like that it never quite seems right but they do okay and especially when you get sequences where they're running around with chainsaws and as i said there's a touch of gremlins to them as well as it as they sort of uh, so i'm not going to give too much away as they, they sort of go through a bad phase let's say the the uh, the owls struggle a little bit with them with men mental problems and they go through a little bit of, bit of a bit of a phase they go through in the film but uh, yeah they do they did grow on me, as I said, I wasn't overly impressed to start, I thought it was a bit, oh no, I didn't like it, but yeah, but as as the film got going, I quite saw, I, I grew, they grew on me, they grew, the, the elves sort of grew on me. You do get a really proper sort, edge of the seat at times, adventure story, once the film does get going, uh, as I said, my only criticism, it took too long to get going, um, and there's even a homage, and you will know this if you either watch the film or if you watch the film, you know what I'm getting at, uh, to Ben Hur in it as well, there's even, even a homage to that, as well as, of course, the Gremlins connection, which I've already mentioned, there's a hint of that, e even to the, even to the style of music at some stage was sort of similar to what I remember with the Gremlins movies, which is another one I like to watch at Christmas time. So I'm going to go back and watch that now. I've mentioned it. it's put it in my mind. Yeah, so that's that's very evident as well. So there's a lot of homages to various adventure fantasy films in this, and it's all there to be seen. The kids of nowadays wouldn't, wouldn't particularly latch onto anything like that. It's just those old buggers who probably look at things. Oh, they've took that. They've done this. They've done that. But uh, hey, it doesn't matter. It was empty. It was still entertaining. I still enjoyed it. Again, as I said, it was a bit too long. I mean, you could have knocked 20 minutes off this and it would have been a far, far better film and I would have given it a higher mark, to be honest, with the 20 minutes uh, knocked off. Um, but it was, it was just a little, little bit boring to start with. There's a good Christmas song as well in it, about half, just under halfway through or halfway through, which was nice. Um, it's always nice to have a good Christmas song and uh, yeah it was it was sort of a good Christmas song I was like brilliant I'm not going to go out and buy it but uh, yeah it was, it was a nice again a touch of other songs again a, t a homage to other songs from other other films and you you, you think you know it sort of makes you think of other films when you listen to it etc but uh, yeah and there's some nice sentimentality dotted about as well in the film which, which is that I like I like uh, no it didn't bring a tear to a glass eye but I do like a little bit of sentimentality in these family films as well which is nice for the adults to, to sort of wipe away a little tear or whatever and there is a little bit of that the ending, well, the, <laughs> it's, it's a good ending. Then the last five minutes, it goes over the top with cringe worthiness, to be honest with you. I mean, it's typical, so corny and cringy. Um, there is a, a rendition of the old Christmas tree song, which is never as big over here where I am in the UK. I'm sure it's, it's, it's sort of more popular in the United States where this film's made, obviously, but uh, it's never, never been a, a song that sort of um, has really, well, I might be wrong, it might just be me, but it's, it's never really been a, a UK song, Old Christmas Tree. It's never really been one of our songs. But there are other connections with it that I think make it not one of our favourites, to be honest, with the other other political connections that, that make it a bit, bit, of a, a bit of a funny one, actually, but... Uh, there you go. Yeah, that's just how it is. And uh, but hey, I'll let it off. It's it's a, a United States uh, based film, so yeah, if they want to sing Old Christmas Tree. They can sing Old Christmas Tree. They can do what they want. I'll let it. I'll let it off for that. So overall, a really good Christmas movie. It does has its faults, as I say. It's it's too long. There's a the acting isn't fantastic, even from the adults. Never mind some of them say I'm not overly impressed with the with the young leads. To be honest with you, very very. Very poor, in my opinion, not not the best. Um, but as far as entertainment goes, as I said, once the action kicks in, the the acting doesn't really matter. It's all about the action, and there's a couple of great scenes, a couple of great fight scenes. You know, where where heroes are trying to are being attacked by baddies and fighting them off, and it's quite good. It is, say, it does it didn't actually keep me on the edge of my seat, even though I knew it was all going to turn out okay in the end. So it always does. But uh, yeah, as for entertainment, I think it's the it's definitely the best I've seen this Christmas. That doesn't say much. Um, I've because there's not been that much about, there's not been much competition to be honest with you.
with you. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a worthy addition to the to the Christmas things. And yeah, I would sit through it again with with my grandchildren or whoever you know if they want to watch a good Christmas film. I, I would sit through it again. I've, I've quite enjoyed it. I think I'd get a little bit more out of it a second time around. To be honest with you, now I've become become more comfortable with the elves, etc. I, I would uh, enjoy it a little bit more. So yeah, worth the watch. Yeah, my little rating. I'm not going to go mad. I don't think it's absolutely brilliant, but I'm going to give it a nice, nice wholesome, nice wholesome rating. Burner's rating of six point five out of ten, which is certainly better than watchable, and it's up there with obviously Joe Public on Internet Movie Database. Even though there's not many people left to review as yet, so I'm going to give it six point five out of ten. Uh, the poster, well, yeah. Yeah, it's a Christmas poster, isn't it? I mean, uh, no, nothing wrong with the picture of Father Christmas. It's nice if you like Goldie Horn and and Kurt Russell as well, isn't it? But uh, it's, it is a nice, it's a nice image. It's a Christmassy one, isn't it? But I'm not going to give it victory, even though it's a. I'm not going to give it defeat. I'll, I'll make it a draw today because it is Christmas, isn't it? So I'm going to give the poster six point five out of ten as well. So I'm going to make the movie movie versus the poster battle. I'm going to make it a, a draw for this Christmas film, and I, I'm glad. I'm I'm glad there was something Christmassy. I don't know how many more there are out there to watch i know there's a lot of if you like backup title b movie type christmas films that you always see on various channels this time of year but as far as a dedicated christmas films concerned yeah i think it would be hard pushed to beat this one to be honest with you uh, I think it was uh, well worth the watch and uh, Merry Christmas to you all as we're doing this. So there you go, 6.5 out of 10 for the film, 6.5 out of 10 for the post. So let me know in the comments what you think. Please check my links on screen. If you follow and friend me on Facebook or Twitter, I do check every couple of days and follow and friend everyone back. And please check out my little website, moviegamenostalgia.com. I used to have a, a video shop. If you've watched my vlogs, you know that. If you've never watched a vlog before, yeah, in the 90s and 2000s in Manchester. And I still sell old and rare DVDs. Uh, quite a few over there in the background, which you can't see now because there's something on screen. Uh, movie posters from that era, the 90s and 2000s. Some great films, some great actors. And I sell board games as well. So... Please check out my website, moviegamenostalgia.com. That'd be much appreciated if you can do that. Anyway, thanks for watching this. I'm not going to wish you a happy Christmas because it's only the end of November and you probably mostly will watch this when I've recorded it anyway. So uh, <laughs> all I can say is please look after yourselves, look after your friends, look after your families. More importantly, let's all look after each other no matter what time of year it is. And please, until we meet again on the film and TV channel or if you flit over to my football channel, please uh, stay safe, everyone. Bernard saying goodbye for now.